I'm Bernard, and today we're gonna to be doing an install on our forged active cargo system on this 2021 Ram TRX. You're gonna to wanna to install the long T-nut on top of the stationary load bracket using two M8 by 14 bolts. Make sure to do this on both of the stationary load bar brackets. Now install the long T-nut on the sliding load bar bracket using two M8 by 14 bolts. Repeat this for both of the sliding load bar brackets. Prep each one of the rail clamps using an M8 by 60 bolt. From the bottom, thread in the bolt until it protrudes out the top by approximately one quarter inch. Repeat for all six rail clamps. All right, on page nine of the instructions, it's gonna show an overview of the driver's side assembly. Familiarize yourself with this as uh, it's great to reference when you're putting everything together. Using your A upright Mark M8 by 20 bolts and bolted as shown on the bottom here using the M8 by 14 bolt, bolt the single T-nut for the outside flange on both sides. So there are two different uprights. They are mirror images of each other. Uh, the A upright goes on the rear driver and also on the front passenger side of the vehicle. The B upright goes on the rear passenger and the front of the driver's side. Using your upright B, use a short T-nut and, and an M8 by 20. Simply thread it in loosely. Then using your stationary upright bracket that you've previously prepped with the long T-nut, slide it over the top of the flange until the bolts line up, the holes line up perfectly. Then using also a long M8 by 20, install that through and install the long T-nut. Do that for the other side as well. Now use the shorter M8 by 14 and finish the installation at the top. This concludes the prep work of the B upright on page 11. It's gonna be really important that the two T-nuts are slid into the upper bar prior to putting the, the A and B uprights on there. There's no way to install these afterwards, so it's gonna be really important that uh, these are done before, otherwise you're gonna take the rack apart again. So we'll grab one of the top bars. This length is going to vary depending on the rack model you have. One important, it will never be 60 inches. The 60 inch bars are your load bars that go on the top. So make sure the bar does not measure 60 inches. It'll be anything but 60 inches. Now we're gonna be installing the driver's side. You're gonna grab your top bar, square extrusion, and you're gonna to wanna to slide it into the B assembly we just did in the previous step. Slide it down carefully, and then make sure it engages the the short T-nut at the bottom as well. And what you're gonna wanna do is slide it all the way to the bottom. There's no need to tighten anything at this time. Make sure the T-nuts are in the top, top track. You're gonna be installing the A upright onto the top bar. Start with the long T-nut, and then you're gonna have to align the two single T-nuts into, the, into their respective T-slots. 
and then you'll be able to slide them together. In the next step, we're gonna be installing the lower rail onto this assembly. You're gonna set these resting on here just like this. Using your M10 by 25 bolt, you're gonna line up the screw holes here. And you'll know it's the right direction because the bottom of the rail has this countersink specifically for the bolt. Install all four bolts and then tighten them fully. Go ahead and tighten all the M8 bolts with the five millimeter supplied uh, Allen wrench. You might notice there's a small gap between the upright and the top bar. That's totally normal. It can be that that's a floating component and a little gap does not make any difference in its strength. All right, so now that you got all the bolts tightened on the passenger side assembly, it's time to start on the drivers. It's basically exact mirror image of this one. So we'll skip to the next steps. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is slide the rail clamps into the, into the lower rail. So it just lines up like this and slide, slide all three of them on. And adjust them approximately equally, but at a later step, you're gonna adjust them on the truck anyways. And you're gonna wanna do that for both sides. All right, so on the next step, we're gonna take the driver's side assembly, we're gonna set it up on the truck bed. And they're gonna use the uh, clamp spacers and we're gonna tighten down the clamps loosely at this point because we're still gonna adjust it. And then we're gonna move over to the passenger side and also uh, uh, install that side as well. So there you go. So you're gonna wanna adjust this, set it right on here. This can move forwards and backwards. So right now that's not critical. You're gonna use one of these clamp spacers. You're gonna put it on top of the bolt that you had, a, had left sticking out a quarter inch as before. You're gonna to wanna to screw this up until it gets tight on the truck bed underneath. You might wanna move this around a little bit because sometimes there's a little plastic pegs that hold, hold the cover in to on top and you don't wanna get on top of one of these. And repeat that for all three clamps. And what you want to do is space these as far, as far apart as possible. You obviously don't want them all right next to each other. So if you can get this all the way to the end on both sides and one in the center, that's the best case scenario. But that won't be that way in all, on all trucks. On the next step, you're going to take the rear upright brace and an M8 by 25. And you're going to insert it in the slot and tighten down this bolt. And you're going to want to make it so tight that this still moves, but doesn't want to pivot on its own. You're going to want to repeat that for the other side as well. All right, in the next step, you're going to install the, the bed brace brackets to the bed braces right here. Uh, you're going to use the M8 by 20s. You're going to want to install one from each side, and then you can actually pivot this up like this. And you're going to want to, in the next step, we'll show you how to center this bracket in the center of the D-pillar. As you can see the bracket is not perfectly centered in the D-pillar. It will work right there, but it's just gonna look best if it's centered in the D-pillar. Every D-pillar is gonna be different. So yours might be narrower or wider, but you're gonna wanna center it. So what you're gonna wanna do is just bump this forward or loosen the bracket slightly. And there you go. And that looks really well centered. You can use the tape measure or you can eyeball it. Perfect. Now you'll be able to tighten these completely down in the, in the correct position. All right, so we're very, very close to finishing this. We're gonna uh, adjust the width of the rack. We're gonna drill a couple of holes, tighten a few screws, and we're gonna be done and out of here. Snug down the bolts a little bit. So we'll come in here and tighten these down. So now we're gonna install the rear loading, sliding load bar bracket. Slide it over the nuts like this, using the knobs applied. Snug it down. 
And you're going to want it pretty much all the way to the back. That's fine. Tighten it down. Repeat that step for the other side. You're going to want to center that as well. Most American trucks are several inches wider in the front than they are in the back. So on a lot of Japanese trucks, they are square, but uh, that's something to remember when we take these measurements. We're gonna take the, we call it the A dimensions. It's between the inner rails right here to the polar opposite side. Then you wanna come up to the top bars and measure that. If it's too narrow or too wide, you're just gonna wanna loosen some of these screws and either spread it apart or, or uh, bring it together until you get to the right dimension. So the next step you wanna do is on the, uh, the rear of the truck, you're gonna wanna do the exact same thing. You're gonna wanna take a measurement between the rails. This one happens to also be 60. And so the top measurement is gonna have to be 45 and three quarters. And when you get to that dimension, you can tighten down the, the screws at the bottom that tighten down the load bar. And the next step, the most important step, after you've got the rack completely squared up, you're sure it's square, everything's gonna work, you're gonna wanna drill some holes in your truck. The best thing to use is a silver Sharpie if you have a bed liner. If you do not have a bed liner, you can use a center punch. Center punches do not work on bed liners. They just bounce right off. So you're gonna want a silver Sharpie. Mark the center of the bottom hole really well. You could slide this out of the way. You're gonna to wanna to center drill it with an eighth inch drill bit. After you've center drilled it, you're gonna to wanna to drill it with the included 2564th drill bit. The important part here is if you have a bed liner, you're gonna to wanna to remove some of this material around the outside to make sure the head of the rivet sits against the sheet metal. If it does not, you'll never be able to tighten it properly. So what we use is a deburring tool, which makes quick work of that. Um, you can buy these on Amazon or a simple pocket knife. Might take longer but gets you to the same end result. You're gonna to wanna to take your rivet nut with the install tool already installed. This is how it comes in the kit. Place it all the way in. Use a 13 millimeter open end wrench and then a 10 millimeter socket. And what you do is while pushing firmly, tighten this down. Then you wanna to to back the screw back out And that's the finished product there. Using one of the M6 by 20s, swing this back down. Line up the screw. Tighten this in place. And now what you wanna do, there's another hole you need to drill and mark, but it's at the top and it's behind the upright brace so you won't be able to get to it. So what you need to do is remove both the screws, you can swing the upright brace out of the way using your Sharpie again. Make sure the bracket doesn't move, mark it. And now you can spin this out of the way. Use the eighth inch drill, pilot drill. Finish that hole with the 2564th. Reassemble your installation tool, washer, and bolt. There we go. Tighten those down. Slide the brace back into place, and you can then reinstall the two screws. 
the two M8 by 20 screws. All right, so next you're just gonna wanna make sure all of the bolts that you've loosened in the previous steps are properly tightened, especially this top one here. And you're gonna wanna repeat that exact same process for the other side. So the finishing touches are to put the, the rubber load bar pad on top. This just snaps right into the T-track on top. You're gonna wanna use the palm of your hand and sometimes they're really hard to install and you'll wanna use like a rubber mallet Any excess on the end can simply be trimmed off with a pair of scissors or a knife. And then the rubber end cap. Installation is complete. All right, thanks for tuning in on the install of the ACS Forged on our new 2021 TRX Ram. Uh, should take you about two, two and a half hours if you take your time. A little bit more if you drink some beer. Uh, if you're ready to carry your world and use any of our uh, Maraud of accessories.